tonight on Hip on the Spot News. The fantastic Eurofighter is on the horizon in DCS world. We got more info on what to expect in the future. A livery editor is getting ready to be released. And performance on high quality maps is getting better. This and more on How I Play. This video is sponsored by Fox3 Managed Solutions. Hello Virtual Pilots, I'm Andre Celesti and tonight we are going to talk about the latest news in DCS world. And you may think it is a dry week, but guess again. Even though we don't have any information on the next update for DCS, there is still time for this month and of course the expectations are high. Meanwhile, besides the multiple questions we get to see on a daily basis in regards of the F4 Phantom, many users out there wonder about the Eurofighter. With so many modules at Heatblur still being under development, Cobra did a response and informed us that the Eurofighter Typhoon is now their first and top priority. Impressive! And not only that, but the A6 Intruder will run aside the Eurofighter being worked on at the same time. And it is expected as the next release after the Eurofighter. Now ain't that nice? Or better said, nice. And as a reminder for everyone, in case you forgot with all the phantasmagoric action happening nowadays, pun intended, indeed it is, hmm, quite. The version of the Eurofighter will be focused on a German one, also good. But wait a minute, the initial release will be a Luftwaffe version with air-to-air -air capability only. At least that is their plan as we know it. And then they want to strike a good balance in regards of what is relevant for DCS World and their Eurofighter. So there will be liberties being taken to ensure the most rich feature set in a modern flight module. So you can expect that after the release in early access, somewhere in the future, they definitely plan to add the multi-role with air-to-ground capabilities. Don't you worry. So once the F4 is out and free to fill all the servers you can imagine in DCS world, you can start to wonder, grab and focus on the Eurofighter. It will never end. Moving on, Raspam got showcased with their IFF and interrogation tutorial for the F-15E Strike Eagle by Natso. The Strike Eagle's IFF is a very powerful and highly customizable system that allows you to ID both friends and enemies. This system is another example of a third-party developer that innovates and offers their help in DCS world to other modules that can take advantage of it. Currently, only Rasbam modules, user control and AI can make use of this expanded capability, but they have offered to share this IFF baseline for free with other devs to hopefully work towards a common IFF system among DCS modules to move beyond the magic DCS mode for IFF. Nice! I highly recommend you watch Natsos video if interested, even if you don't own the Strike Eagle. I linked it in the video description. With the latest unified update for DCS World, we witnessed the new terrain engine scenery system that improved terrain details and optimized performance. As DCS maps have increased quality, detail, realism and complexity over the years, it's been a challenge for the developers to balance this with maintaining a decent level of performance. With the most recent and upcoming maps, they have raised the bar on what is possible and they require a better balance. So they changed the approach to terrain scenery computing, instancing and streaming. The task was to create a flexible system focused on utilizing and saturating an increasing number of compute cores in modern GPUs. And now their new scenery compute system achieved a great increase in GPU and CPU performance, improved VRAM management and streaming from storage disks to VRAM with optimized CPU usage. Their tests indicate a notable performance increase in densely built up scenes. But of course, this is depending on graphic settings and hardware. ED encourages us to provide them with feedback on this enhanced DCS performance. Well, I'll do my best once I upgrade my system, so uh, yeah. 
Now if you are a fan of our channel, you may remember we used to do a mod showcase series called the Add-on Spotlight. That series will continue very soon, but we had to stop it for a while due to some issues with mods and the default DCS experience. Out of respect to our community, we couldn't recommend some of the mods that caused at that time issues in the mission editor and campaigns. So stay tuned and maybe subscribe if you didn't already, as we offer a large variety of content with more to come in the nearby future. And speaking of that, we recently published our Pimax Crystal review for those of you who wonder if this headset is worth the price. Especially if you are flying in DCS world and want a crystal clear immersive experience. And as you already know, for those of you interested in buying a crystal headset and want to help our channel in the process, make sure to use our referral link together with the available codes. We still got a special promotion for a few more orders, a bigger discount with our HIP99 code. Links are in the video description. And because we spoke about mods before, let me share with you the latest info from the SK60 Sierra Alpha Alpha Bravo 105 project. This is a light training jet mod that uses an external flight model and just received a new update with new cosmetic upgrades as well as some flight modeled fine tuning. The default exterior texture got overhauled and they added new liveries plus an updated pilot helmet model. Link is in the video description. And speaking of talented creators, we got another update from Fox Tree Managed Solutions, our sponsor, for their upcoming liveries generator called Skin in the Game FX, a game changer for DCS aviators. This is not just an app. It's your personal skin factory designed to put the power of customization right at your fingertips. Impressive. So, how will it work? They are crafting hundreds of templates for every bird in DCS skies, complete with multiple layers to play with. So, for example, if you want a standard Air Force Grey, or perhaps a camo look for those adversary missions, you will be able to produce it. You will also be able to add nose art, tail flare, and your call sign, and even select the wear level. You know, all those scratches and bruises. All of this leading to a masterpiece ready to fly in under a minute. From what I see, it will cost you around $15 for each skin. Not bad. Not bad at all. We will need to stay tuned for an exclusive sneak peek very soon. Plus, Fox3 wants to let us know that free liveries are on the house for testers and patrons along with juicy discounts on future skins. Their app will be integrated in their existing site, and in the future, they want to ensure that we can preview our planes in glorious 3D with its new skin. So we should expect more info as the end of quarter 1 of this year is closing in on us. Meanwhile, ED is looking for talented mission creators. So if you are interested in becoming an official campaign third party, please get in touch. This allows you to exercise your passion while making an income. They recommend that you gather as much info you can on your project prior of contacting them, keeping in mind that they will need to evaluate the first three missions of the campaign at a complete state. You will also be required to be familiar with the mission editor, its trigger system, military practices, and how to craft great briefings, be able to provide quality voiceovers, and so on. And that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. Many thanks to our Patreons for their continuous support. Remember to check our sponsors, VR Rock for your VR blue light protection and prescription lenses, Fox Stream Manage Solutions for the best DCS servers out there, and Pimax for the most quality VR headsets on the market. And subscribe to keep in touch with all the latest news on your favorite simulators and games. I am Andre Celesti, reminding you to fly safe, and I'll see you next time.